Driver, Tikaninko, a fine outside shooter. The Giants, a bonus at 7-4. Marshall Onis, their star. And Teet Sock, underrated, but a good score, especially from three-point range. He's their unknown hero. And for the United States, a team that has tremendous balance and quickness, and they win on defense. Marley from Central Michigan. Manning of Kansas, Robinson of Navy, Mitch Richmond of Kansas State, and Charles Smith, the point guard from Georgetown. He'll return and lead the Hoya attack next year. John Thompson, the winningest coach in Georgetown history. By the numbers, and what you have to look at here is that everything's about the same until you get to the bottom line. They're averaging about the same number of points. They're shooting about the same from the floor and exactly the same from the line. Three-point shots, that percentage is the same. But the U.S. is averaging 83 points, or the US, USSR is averaging 83 points against. USA defense is allowing only 60 points against a 23-point differential. It's the defense that'll win it for Georgetown. John Thompson and for Alec Gomelski his team must find a way to score I asked Gomelski before the game I said what do you think the key to the game is he says my key I says yeah he said it's back in the hotel room <laughs> <laughs> and they call him the Soviet answer to Red Auerbach that sounds like an answer you'd get from the Boston Celtic great 84 and 1 we're underway last time they played was 16 years ago in Munich the only time the American team has ever lost an Olympic basketball game. Teet Sock, Sabonis up high. Marshall Onis off a pick. Marley has it stolen away by Marshall Onis, and then it goes off his teammate, Volkov Sands. Marley to Smith, Charles Smith. He's, uh, he'll be a senior at Georgetown when he returns. Marley picked by the Phoenix Suns. Manning from Kansas. Rebound all the way out to Sabonis. Oh, the U.S. defense caught napping and a block, but it'll be a foul as Tikanenko goes up for the lay-in. Excellent lead pass here to Tikanenko. Overcomes Dan Manning, which you don't want those fouls early because if he picks up a second one, he sits out for the first half. Good call by the referee. Galieri Tikanenko on the line, an Army lieutenant. You have five seconds to shoot that free throw. You have ten seconds in the collegiate game, and often you'll see much more than that. Danny Manning has been in foul trouble, as you can see in that right-hand column, and that has limited his minutes played. They need him in there. And the Soviets score the first point of the game. Soviets are in a hard man-to-man, -man, belly button to belly button. Yugoslavia defeated the Soviets earlier. I think we had them unbeaten coming in. The pass from Marley underneath and unable to connect was Robinson. And Robinson got away with a bump. Leading 1-0. Marshalunas dishes off. And they'll work that perimeter game inside to the big man. Sabonis blocked by Robinson. Marley brings it down court. David Robinson, 7 feet. Sabonis, 7-3, 7-4. Smith on a dish from Manning. 2-1 USA. Teet Sock, Smith has him. Marshall Onis, Richmond guards him. Good move by Marshall Onis and a foul before the shot. Let's go back to David Robinson. He's got that Bill Russell style springboard on defense. He's quick off his feet. The ball's a little slow. If you notice, Robinson goes up a little bit late, but the quickness makes up for it. 2-1 USA. 30-second clock at 20 seconds. Tikanenko not there, but Sabonis follows it in. 7 feet 4 inches, nearly 280 pounds. 3-2 USSR. Robinson spinning and a foul, not on Sabonis, but on number four, Alexander Volkov, the 6'9 forward. He is foul prone. I believe that David Robinson is a better ball player facing the basket than with his back to it. Robinson at the line, the Navy ensign, graduated with a BS in mathematics and engineer. 
from Virginia Beach, Virginia. It's interesting, the small world of athletics. As a junior in high school, Robinson's coach was Herman Reed in junior high school. And of course, that's J.R. Reed's daddy. USA 4, USSR 3. Volkoff likes to go all the way. And he picks up the foul from Manning, and there's the second on Danny Manning. And out comes Danny Manning. We will not see him normally to the start of the second half. And he's played just two minutes and 14 seconds. Every time Volkoff puts the ball down, he's going all the way, left to right. He looks for the three-point play driving. Replacing Manning. Number nine, Charles D. Smith, the University of Pittsburgh All-America. And here's J.R. Reed in for David Robinson. So two new big men in the John Thompson attack. They put a space eater in to neutralize the bonus. That's J.R. Reed. Volkoff averaging 11 points a game here in the Olympics. He likes the Atlanta Hawks, Dominique Wilkins, and Spud Webb. But he said his real favorites are Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Tries it at four. The Soviets are very keen on American basketball. They know the U.S. game. One of the big breaks they got, Dick, is when the Atlanta Hawks went over there and played three games against them about two months ago, and it was eight or nine ball players from the Hawks, plus the head coach, Mike. You didn't like that, did you? I know I didn't like it. I, uh, I thought that we should send over all-star teams over there and play against the NBA teams here. Richmond unable to hit. Sabonis with a rebound. Clears to Marcellunas. Oh, nice pass. Pekanenko connects a two-pointer, and the USSR leads 7-4 to four with two and a half minutes gone. So far, the USA hasn't had a chance to put on the pressure defense. They have gotten so many points off turnovers in their pressure defense. It isn't a great shooting team, is it, though? With Hershey Hawkins out, it's not a great shooting team. The next pressure shooter out there from outside is little Charlie. Charles Smith the fourth from Georgetown. Marley with four seconds is short. Sabonis almost lost it to Marley. Controls. And the Soviets with a 7-4 lead bring it down. And so far, not much backcourt pressure, and the Soviets dominating the boards. Tempo of the game favors the USSR. Sock to Marcellunas, his first shot. Beauty. Marcellunas, a three-pointer, and it's a 10-4 lead for the Soviets. This is where we're weak. We set up in the half-court offense. Double stack down low. And a turnover. And that was Tiet Sock who forced it. So the Soviets leading. 10-4 have the ball on the turnover. And now Marley gets it back for the U.S. to Richmond. And he is fouled as Marcellona saved the easy basket. And with that foul, uh, breaking the action. Four minutes gone. It's the Soviets 10, the U.S. 4. This end a plethora of uh, U.S. fans and flags. 15-42 left first half. 10-6. Richmond made both of those free throws. And there's a steal. Richmond... Your way, just the free throws by Richmond, a foul committed by J.R. Reed. And this is Reed from North Carolina. Does the basket count? The foul is on Volkov. No basket. J.R. Reed gets the ball high. He likes to turn around and face you with the wide three second lane. Watch him turn around and face. There's a contact. Whistle was blown before the ball was released. 10-6, Soviets lead. And a turnover. Tiet Sock takes it away from Richmond. Sabonis to Marcellunas. This is Volkov. Marcellunas, he is quick. Foul before the shot. And it'll be the second on Mitch Richmond. Marcellunas comes out. And he is replaced by number 10, Kurt Kurtonitis, a good outside shooter. He's the best shooter on the Soviet team, Dick, from three-point land. He's unbelievable. Yeah. Here's Kurtonitis. Here it goes. And the three-pointer is short. Both men outside go down. 
Bert Nidus, the man guarding him, <laughs> Richmond, and it's out of bounds to the U.S. International play, that's no foul. Number eight, Jeff Breyer from Iowa State replaces uh, another former Big Eight star, Mitch Richmond. So the U.S. has J.R. Reed, number six with the ball, Vernell Coles from Virginia Tech. Robinson, Reed, and Grayer. The shorter team, and Marley. Marley with a drive. Oh, my! It's 10-8, turnover. Grayer, Robinson, and down they go again. Robinson and Sabonis, and it'll be on Sabonis of the USSR. David Robinson, that inside position, had Sabonis on his backside. Watch Marley take the baseline here and come in the back door. A lot of English on that ball. Here's another angle. Sabonis comes over there, puts a seven foot four, so he had to come in the back door. Uh, high off the glass. And then the steal, and Robinson over the shoulder, Sabonis. And Robinson at the line for two that would tie. Dick Robinson's one of our four or five shooters in his senior year at Annapolis. He shot 63%. 10-9, the Soviets. John Thompson looking for a run. If he can turn him over off a made foul shot. Now they'll wait for Sabonis to come down, set up. Fortnite will let it fly from three-point land if he gets it. Here it goes. Good take, and they'll draw the foul from Grayer. His first, and for the U.S., their 16 foul. Make that seven now, so from fouls now on, the Soviets will go to the line. The eighth foul, and the bonus comes into play, international rules. Nice head and shoulder fake there. He put Grayer up in the air. Volkov. Curtinitis. He can shoot. I told you, folks, he can shoot. A three-pointer, it's 13-9. 30 years of basketball, he's one of the best outside shooters oh. I've ever watched. Grayer is called for the charge, and that's the set. No, check that, Rennell Coles for the charge, his first foul. And uh, that... That becomes one and one, I believe. That's the eighth personal foul. No, I player control oh, foul. Player control foul, excuse me. But the Soviets are in the one and one from now on. It's a bonus. Using that big body for his teammates to use as a pick. And Marcellonis back in, and he hits a three-pointer, and it's 16-9. to nine. The top of the show, we said the key to the game is that the Soviets have to hit 50% from three-point land. Marcellonis with six points to lead the USSR. Robinson, a jump hook. Gets it back. And scores. 16-11. David Robinson now with five. Robinson's showing more physical play than any other game in the tournament. Volkov, who likes to drive the baseline. Curtinitis. Marley picks him up. Volkov with Reed. Marcellunas and Marley. Threw it away. Grayer saves for the U.S. Marley brings it out. Coles to Marley. Twelve and a half minutes left, first half. The USSR 16, USA 11. Robinson wants the ball down low. Ooh, a long three-pointer by Marley. Cole saves it in the corner, but steps on the line. Out of bounds to the Soviet Union. We'll be back at Chomshil Gymnasium after these words from your local station. Welcome back. It's 18-13 USSR. Two free throws by Curtinitis. Willie Anderson just in the game for the U.S. scored a field goal. Just had another, but it was called off because of a push by Willie Anderson. And there's Volkov hitting. Two-pointer. It's 20-13, the Soviets lead, as they have throughout this first half. Oh, a fine play by Charles Smith, the fourth from Georgetown. 20-15. Approaching the midpoint of this first 20-minute period. Odd man-to-man -man pressure, no double team. 
It's broken. Now the USS All go to three guard attack. There they are. Curtinitis. Three pointer, and that is his shot. Kurt Curtinitis. He's hit on 15 of 29 three point plays. He's by far the busiest three point shooter in this game. Gotta take it from there, David Robinson. You got to. Robinson can't hit. Rebound Curtinitis. Soviets lead by eight. Volkov constantly looking to drive. Now look at the three fellows around the perim perimeter. Marcellonis, Curtinitis, and Tiet Sock. You get all the Soviet names right, but you can't say perimeter. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's easy, Dick? Leave me alone. Curtinitis. <laughs> little extra jump. Another little extra jump. And a rebound underneath. Delio Stenyi. And it comes out to Smith. No help with Smith. And the foul as Grayer goes up. And Sabonis rested will come back in. And Homichus comes in, number 13, the captain. There's a few steps that they seem to allow in international play. He actually took about three extras there by NCAA rules. One extra step allowed. It's kind of like handball. But Dixie, in Rome, you do as the Romans do. Absolutely right. You know the rules, you play by those. The foul's on Marcellonis. Grayer, who played for Johnny Ord, Iowa State, makes it 23-16. And we'll that play in the NBA next year for the Milwaukee Bucks. It's got to be a coaching shot to go from Ord to John Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Sabonis with a rebound. USSR by seven. You see the time remaining, first half. U.S. has called one timeout and we allowed two timeouts and a half and you can't carry them over to the second half. Soviets have not called any timeouts. From outside, Omichus can't hit. Rebound Charles Smith from Pittsburgh. Grayer to Smith of Georgetown. Next time in, David will take him. Here it comes. He's going to take him this time. Nope, he didn't. From outside, three-point Jeff Grayer hits. 23-19 at the nine-minute mark. Soviets still by four. The only time the USA led was at 2-1 and 4-3. Since then, the Soviets building their lead and holding on to it. Their biggest being eight points. Walking in for the score is Sabonis. Give credit to the handoff by Machelonis. Bonus with his fourth point. Power move inside by Robinson, and he picks up the foul. It looked to me that time that David Robinson jumped into Sabonis. And Sabonis with his second foul. Let's go back to the other end, and Sabonis scoring. Well, if he gets it down low, he pretty much takes up so much space. Nice kickoff there. Sabonis here. Robinson uh, Robinson does jump in. It's a bonus who seemed to have position, but the foul goes against the Soviet and Robinson. Now 4-4-5 four, four, from the free throw line. That's the lead to five. If the pressure defense is going to work, which it hasn't worked so far, it should work off a made foul shot right here. Now watch them all pick up the men, apply the pressure. Now come the double teams. Smith should go over that double team. There goes Smith. Hey, great play that time. Willie Anderson had his hands on it, but they call a reach in on Anderson. The fans don't like it. Timeout. 8.33 remaining in the first half. With a free throw and a fine basket. Here it is, the basket that makes a three-point play. The jump hook by Robinson. Then a missed shot at the other end. Here's another angle of it. This justifies San Antonio offering him 26 million, which he signed for. And now Dan Marley has just completed a three-point play, and the game is tied at 27. The USSR had led by as many as eight points in this first half. And one of the fouls, the foul against Marley, was charged to Marcellonis, and that is his third. So just as the USSR has their top player handicapped with fouls, he's still in the game. 
Danny Manning of the USA has played only two minutes and 14 seconds. He picked up two fouls quickly. Curtin Midas breaks the tie for the Soviets. Twenty-seven, ten points for Curtin Midas off the bench. He leads the USSR. European teams do not press. They pick you up after they come over the ten-second line. Double stack down low. Need to try to kick it into David Robinson. Ogden has the ball. Clock under ten seconds. Boy, Marshall Lewis with three fouls came close to picking up another. The steal. Volkov. He likes to drive. And saves it to Keith Sock. Marshall Unis. Think if you notice the three guards again are out around the three-point area. Very difficult to defend against. You can't double team. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Oh, beautiful pass to Sabonis. Assist to Marshall Unis. Six points for Sabonis. A four-point Soviet lead at 6.40 left in the half. That was a pressure shot from 16 feet out by David Robinson. He had to keep the defense honest. By making that, they got to come out and guard him. They rule that Charles Smith kicked the ball out of bounds to the USSR. David Robinson with 10 points now leads the USA. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. Anything surprise you about the game thus far, Coach? Uh, how they neutralized Georgetown, USA's full court defensive pressure. Marshall Onis, Sabonis left alone. And the Soviets get it back. Marshall Onis for three. 34-29. 11 for Marshall Onis. He now is the top scorer for the USSR. A solid man-to-man -man defense by the Soviet Union since the opening tap. Whoops. Offensive foul on number 11, Stacy Augman, who's just in from UNLV. He's the youngest of the U.S. players, just 20, a sophomore with the Rebels at Las Vegas. Left-hand corner of the screen, you see Stacy Augman's elbow. So, the USSR, after giving up an eight-point lead, the American team tying them at 27, and now they've had the ball and a five-point advantage once again. And Curtin Itis, a three-pointer. Coach John Thompson went to a 1-3-1 one, one zone. You can't do it against the three outside shooters. He made a good move in putting in the two water bugs together, which is Coles and Charles Smith the fourth. But there's always one other shooter out there in the circle. Well, the Soviets again match their biggest lead of the half, eight points. Marley to Robinson. Robinson almost he does throw it away. Charles Smith can't control, and the U.S. is not playing well. David Robinson has to take that 16-footer. He made the last one. USA has gone man to man. Oh, what a rejection by Robinson as he says, no, no, yet, yet. To Marcellonis. Is this yet, yet? <laughs> right here. <laughs> Volkov. Soviets out rebounding the U.S. And Marcellonis with the garbage. And Robinson can't control. Curtinitis comes out with it. Oh, he walks all over the place. 2 3 zone. Another three pointer. This one doesn't drop. And Marley rips down the rebound. Ahead to Smith. U.S. down by eight. 4.40 left in the half to Marley. Drives. Marley. And the Chippewa from Central Michigan has seven. Hard nosed ball player. Drafted by the Phoenix Suns in the NBA. Marley now on Curtin Itis trying to put more pressure on that top three point shooter. And they, there's the turnover. That should have been an over the, the line call, but apparently Smith had touched it. Out it comes, and the Soviets getting too many second chances and third chances. And Volkov converts. It's 
There was a case where the U.S. had the backcourt violation, but Smith thought he had a chance for a layup, touched the ball, the Soviets came up with it. When we set up in our half-court offense, we are weak. Foul that time on Pete Sock. Nope, it's on Kurt Nidus. Plans to play in uh, West Germany after the Olympic Games. This Kurt Nidus, a timeout with three minutes and 43 seconds left in the first half. Soviet Union by eight. Long, he has five plays with two personal fouls on them each, sitting on the bench. But don't forget, we only have 11 players that can play. Hershey Hawkins, only if there's an injury at the end of the game, and the foul shot has to be taken with John Thompson using it. Hawkins, the great All-America from Bradley, with a bad knee. He's in uniform, but would not play only in emergency free throw situations. Soviets by six, with three and a half minutes to go, first half. So far, the USA defense has not really stymied the Soviet attack. In fact, the Soviets moving the ball very well, and what a shot by Sabonis using that big body. He now has eight. This is the most and the best that Sabonis has played here in Seoul. J.R. Reed trying to fight his way through, gets it back, and is fouled to reach in. And if that's on Marcellonis, that'll be his fourth foul, and that could be a big whistle against the Soviet backcourt ace. We'll see how they saw it. And that is the fourth foul on Marcellonis. It's hard to believe that Gamelski, the Soviet coach, has kept him in the game. That's, now he comes out. That, that, that's his style. In, in the earlier game against Yugoslavia, he left Volkov in there who fouled out in the first half. They're starting big forward. J.R. Reed at the line. He'll be a junior for Dean Smith at North Carolina this coming season. His first point. Reed averaging seven a game in the Olympics. 41-35, 3.09 left in the half. The surprising thing is that full court pressure seems just like token pressure. Mimichis, the captain of the Soviets, number 13. Volkov, number four. Sabonis up on the high post. Pete Sock. And he was fouled to reach in, I believe, on J.R. Reed. John Thompson's worried about the three-point shot, so he has his two-point guards in there who can extend the defense in Coles and Smith. Reed's second foul. This is Tietzak. His dad, uh, August, was a basketball star and a coach in Estonia. Lithuania, Estonia, half the Soviet team from that part of... Uh, the Soviet Union, the Baltic area near Finland. And Sok, as is with most of the players in this tournament, good free throw shooters. European players are mechanical players, where your United States players are more fluid. Soviet lead back up to eight points. Watch how far they lay off the, uh, David Robinson if he gets the ball high. Marley, with his spin move, forces the shot. And it's taken down by Homichus. He got hung Sock. in the air, put up a Hail Mary. Volkov. Soviets are playing like the more experienced team, aren't they? They are mature. They're a team. They've been together for many years. He averaged 26 years of age. Alone Sabonis. Oh, a fine play, but Sabonis able to get it back and tip it in. And that's the biggest lead for the USSR in the game. A 10-point advantage as time winds away in this first half. I said earlier in the week that uh, the Soviets play preliminary rounds not too uptight. They wait for the elimination end of it, the quarterfinals. Oh, excellent, excellent timing. Robinson nailing the shot that was trickling off the rim from Smith. That's a dozen for David Robinson. Curtinitis lost it for a moment, and it's out of bounds to the Soviets. 21 seconds on the shot clock, the small clock, the big clock, the game clock, a minute and 24 seconds. 
A scramble here and Robinson rattling at home. That was the play at the other end. Well, we've talked a lot about uh, the USA. 16 years to get a chance to wipe away, erase the memory of Munich. But the Soviets have had 16 years to think about beating the U.S. again as well. And the foul is an offensive foul against the USSR. 16 years ago, President Richard M. Nixon was in the White House and Billy Joel had his first big hit in Piano Man. Yeah, Sabonis hit three of the keys, his third foul. And with uh, Marcelonis on the bench with four, the two most important players for Gomelski, the Soviet coach, are now in foul trouble. Final minute. Drive by Smith, runs right into Volkov, who takes it away. Here come the Soviets. Sabonis running the court better than he did earlier, but the pass was behind him. And with 50.8 seconds and at the final minute here the clocks will give you the tenth of a second it's the ball going to the u.s a timeout the soviets with a lead by eight john thompson showing some concern on the u.s bench down to 27 seconds left in the half u.s trying to cut into the soviet eight point lead smith throwing up a prayer the u.s shot selection has not been good they're right into the teeth of the soviet defense and now the USSR with a chance at the last shot could lead by 10 or even 11 based on their fine three-point shooting. Final seconds. And Mitis. And the Soviets at the buzzer lead by 10. Oh, my. Dick, you'll see full court pressure the second half that you've never watched in a basketball game. John Thompson is mad. And here's the John Wooden of Europe. He won seven European championships. Alex Gomelski, his team in front by 10. And everything seems to be going the way of the Soviets, except for fouls on two key players. The captain, Omicha, is showing good, cool, and pressure. So, 20 minutes to go. The semifinal game, 10-point lead, Soviets. Let's go to Brian Gumbel. Okay, Dick Enberg, thank you. The Soviets clearly outplaying the American squad in the first half, looking better than they have the whole tournament. There's another half to come. And Kikanenko, good defense by Richmond to set up. What's happening, Dick, Sabonis is putting a pink elephant in the back of the minds of the USA team. They're hesitating on the chippy shots. All right, so we'll be back. And the drama really building here. The U.S. is going to have to rally from deep behind. They have the ball now, but let's go to Charlie Jones and that 400-meter final. All right, thank you, Dick. We're looking. Continuing. The U.S. getting uh, 14 points from Robinson, but only four fast break points. But Mitch Richmond has hit a three-pointer, and Smith now trying to convert a three-point play is short. But the U.S. gets the ball back, Manning. So it could be a four-point play. It's 52-42. And Volkov has picked up his fourth foul. Manning, he hasn't scored yet, but Richmond gets the loose ball. This is what the Soviets have been doing, shooting, missing, getting the ball back. They had four chances at the other end just before you joined us and wound up getting only a free throw. Soviets will be a little bit slower now because they Gobarov in there along with uh, Sabonis. Goberoff is a young center at 6 foot 11. And Reed puts a move on him and scores. J.R. Reed cuts the lead to 8. So it is a four-point play. Mitch Richmond got his hand on that ball, so I don't know if J.R. will get the credit of Mitch Richmond. Four points for Reed. Lumis with four fouls on the bench. Sabonis is playing with three. Volkov is now on the bench with four fouls. Titsak and a block by Reed, and then he rips it away from Goborov, the young center. Coach All the way, Smith. He has that float down. Doesn't look like the ball's going to go in, but Charles Smith usually makes that shot. Back-to-back -back drives by Smith, and the lead is cut to six. John Thompson's trying to apply as much pressure as possible. He's looking for a run to build up the confidence of the USA. They've got to get Dan Manning into the offensive game. Oh, well, mismatch underneath. Smith's on Sabonis. And Tietzak a charge against the Soviets. Timeout, USSR.
Here's a timeout moments ago after the Soviets had built a 14-point lead at 51-37. John Thompson saying, hey, let's stop the baloney. We're at the point of no return. Now let's go back to the 400 meters. An unbelievable sight here. J.R. Reid has just scored on a power move inside to cut the Soviet lead to four. They've whittled 10 points off the 14-point lead the USSR enjoyed at the start of the second half. We have 14 minutes to go for a chance at the gold medal. This is the semifinal and a foul against Richmond of the USA, his third. And a key to the game has been the fouls against prime players for the USSR. Marcellonis with four, Volkov has started with four, Sabonis is playing with three. For the USA, Reed has three, and now Richmond three. USA hard man to man, trying to turn the ball over. JR got a piece of it. Here he goes to Dunkland. JR Reed, who has not been that outstanding in the Olympics. He's had some bad games. He's really put it on the burner. It's a 52-50 game. In Munich, it was 51-50 the other way as the Soviets handed the USA their only Olympic defeat. In case you're just joining us and haven't really followed that picture, that's the big story 16 years ago. This is the guy that can hit every time out there, automatic. Kurt Nidus with a three-pointer, and he has 18 to lead the Soviets. Back to a five-point advantage. They want the ball in Danny Manning's hands this time down. Reed, they're laying off Reed. Smith, Manning. He's short again. He's cold. Volkov back in the game gets the rebound. No pressure up court, surprisingly. Once they set up, the bonus becomes a key player. Here's Volkov inside. Oh, a good save. Rebound by Manning of the missed shot by Tarakanov. Smith loses his man. Richmond around Volkov. In on Sabonis. Blocked by Sabonis. Saved by the U.S. And then the loose ball picked up by Curtinitis. Two on one. All alone is Sock. And he does just that for another two-pointer. It's 57-50. So after the run by the U.S., the Soviets showing their poise. This is a veteran team. A couple of men that are 30. The average age, 26. They average 6'8 in height for the entire 12 and 224 pounds. I mean, it's an NBA size statistic. Smith, a three-pointer. He is a crunch time shooter ever since Hershey Hawkins went down three games ago. John Thompson's trying to get Danny Manning out of the blocks, getting him into the offensive game. Fortinitis will rub off Mitch. That'll be a foul diving in. On Willie Anderson. That's the fourth foul on the USA, and there's four fouls on the Soviets. They don't shoot the one-on-one -on -one to the eighth personal foul. Let's check the USA lineup now as you look at uh, Tarakanov. There's your review. The NBA, it's the fifth foul of the period. The NCAA, the seventh foul, and it's the eighth foul here in international play. Holes is in. Marley. Grayer in the big bin are Robinson and Manning. Manning has yet to score a point for the U.S. Oh, good move. Volkov, that's a tough sock. Oh, it won't drop. That would have been another three for the Soviets. It's a four-point game. 11 minutes to go. Marley with his drive. And hit it. Kept alive. And a foul will be on Robinson. He got caught reaching back. His first foul. David Robinson at seven feet reached back that time and caught a piece of sock. Teeth sock. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go out and do some darning after that in line coats. 57-53. <laughs> 11 minutes to go. The winner advances to the gold medal game two days from now. Drive by Volkov. Use that free arm to clear the way. He drives left to right. The other end is rare for the U.S. Make that Coles, Vernell Coles from Virginia Tech. He'll be a junior. Next uh, 
season, which will be very soon, October 15th, the Cleveland start practice. Four points, Soviet lead. Marcelonis, number seven, he's back in the game, playing with four fouls. Lost his balance, thought he was pushed. Holds. Anderson cuts the lead to two, and there's a rare fast break basket for the U.S. Excellent feed off by Coles, plus a confident builder for Danny Manning. It's a bonus, and he was fouled as he went with the underhand shot, and there right on his wrist, Danny Manning with a third foul for Manning. I thought Sabonis made a super move that time by drawing the foul on Danny Manning, giving a scoop shot. Looking more to be fouled than to make it. Seven foot four inch Sabonis, who was, of course, a subject of a lot of publicity. He went to, to the Portland Trail Blazers to have his ruptured Achilles tendon work on. John Thompson thought it was helping the other side. Sabonis. A first round pick of the Blazers. He's been in rehab with that couple of Achilles tears since 87. Played sparingly until this game. He's been solid. One out of two for Sabonis. The lead is three for the Soviets at 60-57. Exactly 10 minutes to go. 13 points for Sabonis. Omicius is overplaying Coles. They feel they can keep the ball out of Cole's hands. They can stop the USA. Coles loses his balance, and it goes off his foot out of bounds to the Soviets. Good defense by Curtinitis. Charles Smith, the forward Smith. There are two Charles Smiths on this team. The Georgetown guard and the Pittsburgh forward. He's in. Charles Smith. Coles goes out. So it's Marley, Charles Smith. Both Charles Smiths are in. Reed and Anderson. In this situation, we call him... Small Charlie and Big Charlie. All right, I'll leave that up to you, Coach. That's Marcelonis. He was fouled on the shot, and that'll be a three-point. Now they're going to say after the shot. After the shot is the call. So the Soviets will play it from the side. Fourth foul on Willie Anderson. And that's a seventh foul on the USA. Every foul from now on is one and one. The USSR has only 14 fouls. And they lead by three points. Led by as much as 14 early in this half. And Marley and Marcellonis in a pushing match. And the foul is going to go against Marley of the U.S. And that'll send Marcellonis to the line. Marley's playing a black and blue game, a lunch pail game. Pushing and shoving, trying to keep it physical. And also trying to get Marcellonis to react. So maybe pick up his fifth foul and be sitting on the pine. Marcellonis is two for two from the line. As you look at uh, the Georgetown head... Mentor. A good free throw shooter. He has missed only four of 31 in this Olympic tournament. Automatic. And the Soviet lead is five. 9.15 left to go. It wasn't expected to be this tense. The U.S. has been dominating play other than the one surprising effort by Canada. And there's a push off against the Soviets. Keith Sock as he fought through the screen. Teach Sock couldn't knock down J.R. Reed in the best day of his life. That was a Tony Award. An Emmy, an Oscar. I don't know any other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> Grayer, tough turnaround, but Marley there for the rebound. There's not a lot of movement away from the ball for the U.S. offense. Smith to Marley. 13 seconds, shot clock. Reed. How's he going to get that one in? Almost did. And the foul is against Reed, bullying his way in. So the U.S. trying to play a more physical game, but they're not doing it subtly enough. That time down, whoever Marcellonis was covering, I would have given the ball to that man to take him one on one. It's a good job by the Soviets, Volkov, to move into Reed. Volkov is six foot nine. Everyone looks small out there because Sabonis is just about seven foot four. You said they average over six eight as a team. How many pounds is Sabonis? Two hundred and seventy-nine. Oh. Marcellonis. Oh, nice pass to Volkov. 
That's Alonis. Into traffic, setting up Sabonis. Got away with a walk. Volkov got away with being on the bat. U.S. fighting with themselves, and finally Grayer gets it. Five-point deficit. They need a big basket here. Into Charles Smith. Nice block by Sabonis as Robinson and the U.S. getting the ball inside for two shots. It would figure one of those would go down, but the Soviet defense too tough. And now the USSR with a chance to build on its five-point lead. And it's under eight minutes. Sabonis left alone now. Sets up Volkov. And he is fouled by Robinson. One of the biggest assets of Sabonis is his passing ability. First of all, the relays on the fast break and in tight passes. Al McGuire, for the first time, I sense the U.S. is in serious trouble. You had the feeling that with their defense and their speed and youth, they could rally, but the Soviets didn't buckle when it was tied. They've come right back to build the lead to seven, and here's Volkov with a chance to make it eight. And the USSR is getting all the loose balls. Eight-point lead again. If the USA is going to get back in the game, I believe that Danny Manning has to go on the court and get a hot hand. Manning has not scored a point in this game. Yes, he had a dunk down the other end of the book in the second half, I believe. Well, we don't have it in the book, Coach. So I'm probably wrong again. <laughs> May not be. Charles Smith. <laughs> he won't drop. Won't drop again for Robinson. And it's that kind of play. You just sense the right things are not happening if you're a U.S. fan. Robinson will get free throws, but this should have been a three-point play for him. Six for eight from the line today, looking for his 15th point. Every opportunity for the United States now becomes important. They must capitalize. Because Plenty of time left. When it gets under five, the clock becomes important. It's at seven now, a little bit old. 65-58. 7 and the clock kicks away. At no time in the previous games did the Soviets play like this. And maybe there was a case of not uh, giving the scouts the full picture. Marcellonis down the alley. What a play, but it's short and Robinson rebounds. U.S. hustles it up court. Grayer again in this 10-footer. Volkov pulls it in. Arcelonis to Sabonis. Six and a half to go and a foul on Marley. Nice play that time for Cotonitis. As he faked the shot, Marley was going by him. He stepped into Marley's flow, which created the foul. Percy Hawkins, the All-America from Bradley. Bad knee, can't play. They don't want to risk any further injury. It's not just a sprain, but a sprain. And uh, that three-point shooter will sit on the bench. And how the U.S. and uh, Coach Thompson would like to have him available. As I said all week, Dick, he's a, he's a God-made shooter. He's a scorer. Yeah, he can make the three-pointers at will. And Kurt Nynas misses the free throw. Don't forget, you don't have to take a foul shooter. You can take it out at half court. Timeout, 6.29 to go, and the Soviets lead by eight points. And we'll take a break right after this shot. As we got two out of three. Soviets by nine. Welcome back. You see, Sabonis has just taken a seat with his fourth foul. He fell right down, collapsed in disbelief at the call. Grayer hits both free throws, and it's 67-60. Check that Brunel Coles got the two free throws. A seven-point Soviet lead with five and a half minutes to go. Marcelonis, Sabonis, and Volkov, three starters with four fouls for the Soviets. Anderson has four, the, and so does uh, J.R. Reed for the U.S. Boy, that's a quick whistle there on Coles. The 44th foul of the game, you expect a lot of whistles in international play, but suddenly the two officials have decided that their role should be important in this one as well. Both teams are in a one-on-one. -on -one. 
This could be a stunning moment for U.S. basketball. They were expected to dominate the Soviets, who did not play all that well in this uh, championship thus far, while the U.S. was, other than a Canadian game, beating everyone by 30 or more. The key was, Dick, I watched them in Rotterdam, the key was when the Atlanta Hawks went over to Moscow and played three games. The Atlanta Hawks beat them once in overtime, once in a cliffhanger, and then lost to them. I mean, you don't take on an NBA team and, and be competitive without being good. The U.S. just having trouble getting shots. Marley, a little fake by the Soviet player. He drives for the score, 69-62. Five minutes to go. And Marcelonis drops at the other end. He's a player. In my opinion, Marcelonis is the only person that can start for an NBA team. 17 for Marcelonis. Reed playing with four fouls. He loses it out of bounds. Yolostenyi in for Sabonis with good defense. And you sense now in this young American team uh, a feeling of panic. They have not been able to do control the game. The Soviets have. Now they have gone to a pressure team out there. Four quick guys with J.R. Reed. And they force the turnover. I thought John might have made this move a little bit earlier. Ogden is an unbelievable defensive player, along with Smith, Coles, and Marley. That turnover was only the 12th by the Soviets, 13 for the U.S., and a reach-in goes against Kurt Nidus. That is their eighth foul, so the U.S. now will go into the one-and-one. One. Trailing by nine points. Sabonis returns. Playing with four. Marcelonis with four and Volkov with four. So Gomelski has put those starters back in, each with four personal fouls. Mel Coles. Last year led the Metro with a 24-point average and led and assisted well as well. Doesn't get the roll, and Sabonis hugs the rebound. And another lost opportunity for the U.S. We'll start to work the clock down. There's 15 left on the shot clock. going to drive all the way. Oh, they say it touched Marley, and it did. Manning and Robinson are waiting at the scores table to return to the game. Pete Sock. Nice rebound by Coles. He's going to go all the way. And now Coles, 71-64, seven-point lead for the Soviets, just under the four-minute mark, and here come the two big men for the U.S., Manning and Robinson. Robinson has played well, has 17. Danny Manning has been a mystery. Early foul trouble and has been shut out. But we know what kind of a clutch player he is. He carried the Jayhawks to the NCAA crown. We'll regroup at the 10-second line and attack again defensively. Soviets are trying to work the clock down each time down. But there's too much on the big clock. Three minutes and 43 seconds. 30 second shot clock, and it currently is at 11. Marcelone is doing a lot of acting and gets the foul from Coles. Third on Coles, and that's not the man you want to foul. Marcelone is shooting in the high 80s. 35 left. Now remember, in international rules, the last two minutes, a very critical part of the game is that you don't have to shoot free throws. You can't foul to get yourself back into the picture. In the final two minutes, the team that's fouled can take the ball out of bounds. Robinson. Score. David Robinson has 17 now. I think we have credit in the two two minutes. Five point game. 317 to go. Kirknitis, out there, and Smith is for the U.S. A critical trip down court. Smith can't hit it, and Sabonis has the rebound for the Soviets. Tietz Sock, they break the pressure, and here comes Marcelonis. Sabonis, 
And Curtin Itis is fouled as Coles had to cut in to save the easy basket. Four fouls on him. 2.53 to go. Excellent pass by Sabonis in tight. Coles saved an automatic two points by fouling. So see if Curtin Itis can bottom him out from 15 feet away to charity line. Each team has one timeout remaining. We're only allowed two and a half. Both teams are in a one and one. 72-66, and where the Soviets have a team, if behind, they can get the easy threes. The U.S. is not structured that way. It's been a team that has scored inside and not outside. Especially and with Hershey Hawkins being down with an injury. Poles, tough defense. Sabonis rips down another. It's a two-on-one break. Marcelonis, and that could do it for the Soviets. Got to call their last time out. Regroup, put five water bugs in there, get Mitch Richmond in, and attack all over the court. They, surprised they're not calling a timeout. Two and a half minutes to go, and the Soviets sitting on a big nine-point lead. Marley from three-point range. That was an NBA three-pointer. 75-69. Only the fourth three-point shot for the U.S. Here comes Volkov. No foul as he runs over Coles. A basket good. And with 2.13 left, a timeout is called by John Thompson. Oh, my. It appears the Soviets are going to do it again. It was a surprise in 72. It would be a surprise again here in 88 as Marley can't hit the three-pointer. Robinson jams the rebound, and it's 77-71 with two minutes to go. Now, any fouls, the Soviet Union can take the ball out of bounds, have that option. And breaking the press is Volkov. Curtinitis, they'll try to use up as much of the 30 seconds on each possession. We'll watch the shot clock. 16, 15, 14 on the shot clock. Nine. USA has to play tough defense because two possessions, three-point area, they can tie the game going to OT. One second to go. Rebound Robinson. So they used up all 30 seconds, then they throw it away. Marley didn't have room to receive the ball. They'll call it against Keith Sock. That was a two by the official because they have to allow the man to come down after he catches the ball. You take the free throws or take it out of bounds down by six. With 122, I would take the free throw. Marley is just an average free throw shooter, around uh, two out of three, 67%. In his uh, senior year, up there with the Chippewas, he shot 64%. 77-72. That's 13 points in the game for Marley. He's averaged 14 tops on the U.S. squad. This is going to go right down to the wire. Marley gets his own rebound, makes it a three-point play. 77-74, 118 to go. Hard pressure up court. Safety foul is Sabones, floated high to him. They did it again. That takes the pressure off. Ten-second nope. clock, it's down to five seconds. Curtinitis left alone. Scores. Big basket for the Soviets. They're back on top by five with a minute two to go. Look to get the ball to Danny Manning. Marley, fall away, rattles it in and out. And a foul by the U.S. with 52 seconds to go. And the United States found themselves in a position in the last seven minutes of this game of having to score on almost every possession, and they could not. They wasted a lot of opportunities, and the Soviet defense was very tough inside. Very, very strong. What's more important, Dick, I don't think the Soviets will take the foul shots, even though he's an excellent foul shooter. The clock is their friend more now than the foul line. They get a new 30-second clock. So now it's going to take a miracle for the U.S. They trail by five. 84-1, and one, the U.S. Olympic basketball record. This... The game that the United States invented, and they certainly have controlled internationally until 72. And then the freaks of the Olympic competition, the Americans and the Soviets not playing until this day in Seoul, Korea, and the USSR may have had plans of their own. Everyone was thinking of U.S. revenge. 
John Thompson has put an extremely quick team in. Three guys around 6'4", 6'5", along with Charles Smith. They'll scram as much as they can. Volkov has it knocked away. Great play by Ogden. Unbelievable. And a foul on who? Excuse me, that play was by Anderson, not Ogden. Outstanding play. Marcellonis gets his fifth foul with 36 seconds to go. Watch Anderson, number 10. Flicks it away and then saves it. What a play by Anderson of Georgia. I was right. Ogman touched the ball first and Anderson saved it. Marcellonis leaves with a great game. No wonder the Atlanta Hawks want to sign him after the Olympics. He has not signed, obviously. He averaged 26 points a game against Atlanta when they toured the Soviet Union. Here comes Robinson and Manning. Manning still without a point in the game, and that will be one of the uh, items in bold print when the basketball media tell this story in the United States. We're going to stay right here with uh, 36.9 seconds left. A five-point Soviet lead, two free throws. Would Thompson be considering trying to make the first free throw and miss the second now? Well, he would definitely not take the uh, free throw if Ogman is the shooter. Anderson shoots 78 percent. Uh, if Anderson's a shooter, I, I would maybe go for it. But I think John will not take it, take it out of bounds, look for maybe a, um, a drive, if not a three-point shot, and then if the ball turns over to the USSR, to foul right away, even though the USSR will not take the foul shot that allows the USA to set up their defense properly. And then he'll get back in the game, the defensive players. Right now he has the uh, offensive players in there with Manning and Robinson. The best outside shooters are Smith and Marley, but not uh, a glorious three-point shooters. The best is on the bench, Hawkins and Richmond, who probably is second best. Watch little Charles Smith. He won three games last year for Georgetown against Syracuse. And look at that. Pittsburgh and LSU. There's the difference in NCAA and USA play. That would have been a couple of whistles, one for traveling and the other on a foul. Instead, it goes out of bounds to the Soviet. Tens of seconds tick away. And with it, the dream of the... Oh, what a steal by Ogman. Ogman scores. No. Willie Anderson is right. Anderson scores. 79-76. And a foul on Charles Smith with 15 seconds to go. Good foul by Charles Smith. The USSR, Dick, will take the ball out in the side. John Thompson will put in Ogman. He'll probably pull out uh, Danny Manning, most likely. Now Robinson's going to go out. Is one of the men going out. Here comes Grayer yeah, in. Yeah, and there Manning. goes Danny Manning out. So you got Grayer and Ogman in, two great defensive ball players, along with Anderson, Smith, and Marley. They need a steal and a three-point shot. Wide open. Kamichis. Oh, and he gets it back. Oh. And the Soviets get it again, Volkov. And finally a foul. So the U.S. had a chance, a couple of missed shots, but because of the shorter, quicker defensive team in, the taller Soviets able to get their own rebound. Outside an interception on the inbounds pass, the USSR has done a magnificent job in this game. Give credit to their coach, Gomalski. The world has certainly caught up with the United States in this game. No longer does the U.S. dominate as they did for so much of these Olympic games. Whistle with uh, just under two seconds to go. But there is no time really for even a miracle now. And the Soviets are already celebrating. Heartbreak Hotel on one side, and the other side is happiness, joy. We've done it. It's been a tough trip for these kids. John Thompson has not let them do much else but practice and play the game. They'll leave home. He'd made a statement earlier, basically, that they, they were there to win the gold medal, and that was the purpose. Uh, there were kids who grumbled and thought about quitting. It wasn't fun. And how tough it'll be now to assimilate this loss. You've got to remember, Vic, that John Thompson, it's a team sport here. It's not like gymnastics, boxing, or track, where you're really doing an individual thing. So you've got to keep the team together as much as possible. Now, maybe there's an overkill, but I'm not sure. Sock hits the free throw. It's 80 to 76. Now, final. 
That was ruled an intentional foul, so the Soviets get the ball back. And here's the frosting for the USSR. They win it. 82-76. The Soviets will go to the gold medal game against either Australia or Yugoslavia. The United States goes home stunned with a semi-final loss to the bigger, more experienced, and perhaps more clever USSR.